What's up, beautiful people? We back with another banger of a video. I be thinking a lot of these videos be bangers, but this one is definitely lit, and it's on some stuff that we all need to be on. I'm going to be on something like this in the future, so y'all got to stay tuned. You want to boss up your life? All you got to do is get in with me. You feel me? Just wait. Just watch. But nah, as of right now, we're going to talk about the people who actually doing this stuff today. Right now, boots on the ground, hand money being exchanged, you feel me? Foot to ass right now. Foot to butt. Is my foot say he tired from all of this ass I'm kicking? Nah, but I'm saying, um, this video we talking about thirty million dollar luxury estate in Ghana. They call this place Ayu Mensa Park. African Americans going over there to do their thing, not waiting on these European cracker countries to do something for us. I'm gonna keep it going. Okay, not waiting for these the credit and all of these barriers that's in our ways. Okay. I'm gonna keep it going. And not begging or waiting for any of these banks or having to do it their way or investing on their land, investing it for our own people in our own places with our own money to profit for our own people. Come on, man. Port Court for the kids to play. There's a jungle gym and there's a beautiful park in the center. We've really tried to incorporate nature. Kofi, why you left America? and decided to come to Ghana to start a business like this. Why not doing the same business in wherever you are? You know, I think the question you asked is interesting and, it, and it, uh, it, it pushes me into an area that I find really fascinating. I think that a country like Ghana needs to tie in uh, and rope in the diaspora. That Ghana, Africa needs the global black diaspora. And equally importantly is that the entire black diaspora needs a strong and prosperous Africa. We have to work together. And it's not simply a question of unity. It's also a question of the different skill sets that we bring to the table. And I'll, I'll explain specifically. Um, so as a Ghanaian business person, if you go to a bank, you're borrowing money at 11%, 12% interest rates. What? Right? An African-American business owner uh, or homeowner may get a mortgage for 3%. All right, so money in the West is cheaper. So having a brother or a sister over there who you can pull into your business, who has access to capital. You know, I think the, the cash flow for black America is something in more, more than $1.5 trillion a year. So just from a financial perspective, and you're looking at a market on the continent of a billion people plus. And African Americans are about maybe 40 million people. So connecting African Americans, including Ghanaian Americans, including the African diaspora, with the continent makes great business sense for both parties. There are opportunities here where their money will, will be far more impactful, where they can get uh, better returns, Ooh. investing in Africa, and, they're de and we're developing a country. This, this development is probably the largest townhouse, townhouse community in West Africa. Kofi, like what I read about you is that you are not in this alone, yes. but your partner is an African-American. That's right. Is that true? That's right. So I partnered with a company called Black Ivy, and it was founded and is led by an African-American woman lawyer called Cheryl Mills. And she's an extraordinary person, and I was very excited to do this deal. Um, and she brings a wealth of knowledge and skill and a huge network and um, a lot of energy to the project. So it's been an extraordinary um, journey. Has she been to Ghana before? She's here, in it, she's in and out of Ghana all the time. This is the formula for our success. I'll give you an, another example. Let's look at the chocolate industry. Okay. 70% right? of the world's chocolate, or cocoa, comes from Ghana and Ivory Coast, two countries. 70%, yeah, exactly. right? This is a, almost a, two bil a $200 billion industry global industry. And when people think about chocolate, they think of Belgium. They think of Hershey, Pennsylvania. There's no cocoa in Hershey, Pennsylvania. It grows here. Plus, if we keep leaving it up to the musty dust of colonizing cracker countries, they're going to continue using child slaves and the multiple genocides across the world and continue locking up us, locking up more black people in the world than anybody else. And we're continue leaving our children to it. Right. We need access to those markets. We need partners, African-American partners, based in the US, that can help us process over there. 
Pause again. He made it clear that the money is cheaper over here for now. Shout out to the Africans fighting to make their money cheaper. But our real goal should be able to process every raw material there, full system, everything to finished product. We also need to set up shipping in our own ways of getting our product across the way instead of relying on other companies that's gonna destroy us with the prices of shipping and travel. Like, where's all the African airlines? Can't none of y'all come scoop us? That thing saved by $1,500. The reason why I love your channel, it's all about African ownership. Exactly. Black ownership. 